Good afternoon everyone. I'm Sam Shorten, co-founder of 10 Feet Tall Shoes in Singapore. If you look down right now, the chances are you'll be looking at a pair of bare feet. But when you head out later to see your friends or go to the shops, I imagine you'll have an array of shoes to choose from. Maybe you'll choose your latest pair of Vans, which you convinced your mum to buy you, even though she said they were ridiculously expensive. Or perhaps you prefer your Nike Air Forces, which you bought on Lazada with the money you'd save from birthdays and from your gran at Christmas. Or as we're in Singapore, perhaps you'll prefer to pick your favourite Hawaiianas or Adidas slides. Your choice will invariably depend on where you're going, what you're doing, or perhaps even who you're meeting. But for many, the reality of life is that there is no choice. There are no shoes, or if there are, they might look something like this. And that's because it's not uncommon for people to grow up without ever having had a pair of shoes in their lifetime. It's really hard in Singapore, sitting here, trying to fathom out what it would be like not to have something as basic as a pair of shoes, isn't it? Or indeed the consequences. But imagine being in the depths of winter, working on a hazardous industrial site, or walking for five miles to and from school every single day without shoes. Sadly for millions of people around the world, this is an everyday reality. For countless more, it's a sudden and devastating consequence of a natural disaster. In 2015, 10% of the world's population, that's 734 million people, lived in extreme poverty, meaning they earned less than $1.90 a day. So is it any wonder that an estimated 300 million people can't afford a pair of shoes? They can barely feed themselves or put a roof over their heads. And due to the current COVID-19 crisis, the World Bank estimates that poverty rates will go up for the first time in 20 years, with an additional 40 to 60 million people likely to fall into extreme poverty in 2020. Life is becoming more of a struggle for more people who can't walk out of it, literally. And when someone doesn't have shoes, it's not just their feet that suffer. Without shoes, people are vulnerable to scrapes, cuts, bacteria, and even parasites that can lead to infection, disease, amputations, and sometimes death. Kids without shoes can't often attend school. Adults can't work. New shoes give people a feeling of joy and dignity they deserve. So whilst a pair of shoes can't solve everything, when people's basic needs are met, their world begins to change. I first became interested in the power of a pair of shoes when a friend and I set up 10 feet tall four years ago, selling properly measured and fitted school and sports shoes to children in Singapore. From day one, we wanted our business to have social enterprise hardwired into the DNA of our business. We wanted to stand for something special. One of our ideas was to collect used shoes for donation, but having grown up in the UK where we'd always been told not to hand down shoes as they mould to each individual's feet, we were hesitant. That was until we reached out to our consulting podiatrist, Helen Crawford, from the Osteopathy and Podiatry Centre here in Singapore. Having worked in many parts of Southeast Asia over the last 20 years, donating her time to help with people's foot and podiatry issues, she explained that there were huge gastro gastrointestinal problems caused by parasites being absorbed through the soles of people's feet. Anything which covered the soles of the feet would therefore help prevent disease. Hence the 10 feet tall shoe bank was born. From the day we launched, we asked people to bring their old pairs of shoes when they came in to buy new ones. Young feet grow so quickly, we knew used or pre-loved shoes would be good enough for someone else to wear. We promised to polish, pack and send every pair we collected with a handwritten note from one child to the next, to children who really need them in places like Cambodia, Indonesia, Africa and India. Getting shoe donations out of Singapore was complicated due to all sorts of regulations and restrictions, so we decided to partner with a local school called UWC, who offered to take all our shoe donations in their luggage when they visited various schools, orphanages and charities around the world as part of their Global Concerns programme. Before their donation trips, we went in to train teachers and students 
how to measure and fit using a paper-based sizing gauge so they could uphold our values around ensuring shoes are properly measured and fitted, even with our donated shoes. When the team arrived for the first time at their shoe donation trip at the Whittier Asher School in the eastern villages of Bali, they set up shop, laying out all the shoe donations in size order, split between boys and girls. Shoes were then fitted to each child in turn, and the look on their faces tells you all you need to know. These shoes were not only a way of preventing disease or enabling access to education, but a sign that someone else cared. It was clear the shoe bank really captured the imagination of our community in Singapore. So in addition to accepting donations at our shop, at a local shopping centre, we also partnered with all the big international schools, sports clubs, children's gyms and membership organisations to organise big kick off your shoes events at the end of term in July and December. The idea was that children could donate their shoes as they headed off for their holidays, knowing that someone else less fortunate would go on to have some amazing adventures in their pre-loved pairs. To promote the events, we created big yellow shoe banks and banners featuring the children who benefited from our shoe donations. We went into schools to give speeches like this one and in turn asked students to spread the word in assemblies and amongst their friends and peers. With SJI High School, we helped organise a day where students went barefoot for a day to raise awareness of the collection event and enable students to empathise with those they were seeking to help. Students also helped sort and polish the shoes they collected and write small notes to send with each pair of shoes. We made the collections between schools a little competitive, asking them to total how many shoes they collected and take creative pictures of their donations. Last year, we organised a season of 17 Kick Off Your Shoes events in June and July, and the response was overwhelming. We collected well over 15,000 pairs of shoes. Sadly, with COVID this year, we've not been able to run the big donation events pre-summer, but we're hopeful the shoe bank will be back up and running again before the end of the year. To help us distribute these shoes, we partnered with an amazing US-based charity called Souls for Souls, whose mission it is to disrupt the cycle of poverty by creating sustainable jobs and providing relief through the distribution of shoes and clothing around the world. Since 2006, they've distributed more than 35 million pairs of new and gently worn shoes in 127 countries around the world. Amazing. Our shoe bag donations, whilst incredibly modest in comparison, help Souls for Souls wear out poverty in four key ways. Firstly, shoe donations. Given the primary mode of transport in most developing countries is still by foot, donations of pre-loved pairs of shoes help protect people from parasitic diseases, which are often transmitted by walking barefoot on infected soil. Shoes are also often a prerequisite of children attending schools, even in the poorest, most remote places of the world. Our shoe donations to places like the Lambden School in the Dak in northern India, the Mapaka Refugee Camp in Swaziland, or the Parviar School in Mumbai, India, allow children to attend school, providing them with an education, and in turn helping to disrupt the cycle of poverty. Even in developing markets in the US, shoe donations have helped bridge the social divide by helping people who are homeless and jobless get back on their feet and help them seek and maintain employment. Secondly, microenterprise. Souls for Souls microenterprise model helps people living in deep poverty in developing nations with the opportunity to start and sustain small businesses selling shoes. Batches of the shoes we've collected and donated are sent to markets like Honduras, Haiti and the Philippines, where entrepreneurs are trained to set up their own enterprises, selling shoes at markets or roadside stalls. For Mary Ange in Haiti, this programme has been life-changing. Before joining the Souls for Souls microfinance scheme three years ago, Mary Ange, her husband and four children were facing eviction. Over 80% of people in Haiti live below the poverty line and with unemployment of 40%, life is incredibly tough. Mary Ange purchases shoes from one of Souls for Souls local development agency partners in Haiti and takes them by truck to a smaller market where she sorts the shoes ready to sell. As a result of the income she's generated, 
she's bought a plot of land where she's building her own home. Selling one pair of shoes can provide her with five meals for her family. 20 pairs of shoes can provide a year of housing. 30 pairs of shoes can provide a year of schooling for one of her children. Repurposed shoes act as a resource to help entrepreneurs like Mariange generate income to provide for themselves and their families. It's not about charity, but instead giving people the tools, resources and knowledge to create a sustainable income for them and their community. A steady supply of good quality shoes can help fuel micro enterprise programmes like this one and help lift more people like Marianne out of poverty. Secondly, so thirdly, disaster recovery. Souls for Souls works with over 1,200 non-profit partners to distribute new shoes donated by retailers and manufacturers in times of natural disaster. In the wake of fire, floods, hurricanes or earthquakes, when people lose their homes and their entire possessions, Souls for Souls parachute in thousands of new shoes with a team of people to help fit every individual. Over 15 million shoes have been donated so far. Fourth, environmental sustainability. Underpinning the impact of donating shoes, new shoes and new shoes, is another huge benefit to the environment. Singapore generated 7.7 .7 million tonnes of waste last year. That's the equivalent to the weight of 530 double-decker buses. On average, Americans throw away 32 kilograms of textiles, shoes and clothing per person per year. That adds up to nearly 10 billion kilograms of unnecessary waste. The Environment Protection Agency estimates that only 15% of clothing and footwear in the US is recycled, leaving the remaining 85% in landfills. Souls for Soul has estimated that they've kept 23 million kilograms of shoes and clothing from being thrown away over the last 14 years, protecting the environment by repurposing new and gently worn shoes and clothing otherwise destined for landfill. So looking forwards, how can you step up and help us wear out poverty here in Singapore and beyond? Number one, clear out your cupboards. Sort out any shoes you don't want or which don't fit you anymore and ask your family to do the same. Secondly, host a shoe drive and get your friends, family and community, perhaps your school or your church groups involved too. Just make sure it complies with social distancing regulations in whichever country you live. Thirdly, donate shoes. Contact 10 Feet Tall who will tell you the details of our next shoe bank events or where to donate. Above all, look after your shoes, as hopefully you've learned today that someone else could benefit from them as much, if not more, than you. When we can help provide a pair of shoes, we're helping to bridge the economic gap, creating opportunities and bringing dignity and hope. So next time you make a choice about which shoes to wear, think about the extraordinary power of a simple pair of shoes to change someone's life. Unleash the power of your shoes today and help people to take a step towards a brighter future tomorrow.